Some buildings come to symbolize a nation, like this, and this, and that. It's the Opera House that instantly put Australia on the map. Like other landmark buildings, it was enormously ambitious, and it used trailblazing building techniques. This incredible building has its share of secrets hidden in its engineering DNA. It just wouldn't have been possible without a First World War gas mask. Glue for false teeth. OK, well, stand well back. Ancient Egyptian woodcraft. A copper-bottomed sailing ship. Whoa! Look at that! And a collapsible toy. Cut! in your life, you'll know this building, the Sydney Opera House. At the heart of every great opera house and concert hall, obviously, is this. The stage, the seats, this is what it's all about. And from in here, well, you really could be anywhere in the world. But you certainly wouldn't say that about the structure around it. It's certainly not just a boring box around the stage. In fact, it's one of the most famous buildings in the world. This building has such a famous shape that you could draw it on the back of an envelope and almost anyone would recognize it. Completed in 1973, the distinctive profile of Sydney Opera House instantly made it an icon of Australia. But construction had been troubled Political wrangling led to costly overruns and delayed completion by nine years. And the building wouldn't even stand up unless the designers had overcome formidable engineering challenges with some help from a collapsible toy. But more of that later, because when I said I wanted to get on top of the building to have a look around for myself, they didn't just point me to the lift. There's a lot of safety equipment coming out here. Oh, there's more. Is, is this a hint? I'm beginning to get that feeling when you don't quite know what you're in for. How about that? But you'll be quite safe. Quiet. Yeah. So, with enough equipment for an Everest expedition, I set off. Maybe this is the way to the cheap seats. I do like a night out at a theatre. Ow. Wow. That is staggering. Suddenly, you feel you really are standing on a piece of sculpture. It just takes the breath away. It just doesn't seem real. There are many, many theories about what inspired the shape of the Sydney Opera House roof. Sails, nuns' hats, an armadillo. Perhaps not. But whatever you see in these incredible forms, we do know that the architect wanted to create a magical space where you could leave everyday life behind. The site itself was extraordinary. Previously a tram terminus, Danish architect Jørn Utsen aimed to make the most of its position right on the waterfront in the heart of Sydney. This is how it all started, in 1956, with Utsen's rough sketch for a competition for a new opera house. According to one version of the story, Jørn Utsen's winning design with these spectacular shapes wasn't even on the shortlist. It was picked out of the reject bin by one of the judges. But engineer Ove Arra, who's another hero of this story, feared he couldn't build Utsun's winning design. The 
problem was lots of big curved shapes and Utzon didn't want columns to hold them up either. Steel would have been the obvious solution. It was easy to work and strong enough to hold the complex shapes. Best of all, it would be affordable. But Utzon wasn't thinking about the price or making construction simple. His plan was for a vast, magical space, a huge sculpture. He was the architect and he wanted concrete. It was up to the engineers to make it happen. Engineer John Nutt was one of Arup's team of head scratchers. You know, if you're working with good architects, they will challenge you. And the last thing you want to do is say, listen mate, you can't design this. It's not going to work because you know that somewhere there's a solution. Arup knew that the magic of the design would be compromised with traditional concrete construction. They could never achieve the delicate shapes Utzon wanted. Arup's answer was to make a frame for each sail out of huge hollow concrete ribs. But it had never been done before on the scale required at Sydney. The biggest ribs would be fully 55 meters high. They were too big and heavy to mold in one piece. The principle behind the solution was child's play. Enter our first connection, a puppet. This is the key. Well, not this particular giraffe, but the principle behind it, because toys like these are made of individual segments, in this case made of wood, held together with a cord. When you press the button on the bottom, it slackens the cord and the whole thing collapses. But let go again and it tightens up and the whole thing keeps its shape. And that is the principle they used when they built the Sydney Opera House. Arup decided to make the huge ribs out of segments which could be pulled together to make the right shape, just like that child's collapsible toy. The technique is called post-tensioning. It also strengthens the concrete and was devised by a French engineer in the early 20th century to make bigger spans in bridges. Back at my workshop, Arup engineer Ed Clark shows me how it works. So Sydney was made up out of uh, precast segments of concrete. We've got precast segments here, not concrete here, polystyrene. So we're right. going to stack them up and build ourselves an arch. OK, so we're actually going to recreate it here. Yep. You say it's on the, what, one-tenth scale? One-tenth scale. It's still quite big, though, isn't it? It's going to be big. It's going to be right. about six and a half metres high. Sydney is about 60 metres high. We start by building two stacks of blocks. The post-tensioning bit comes later, when you thread all the blocks together. They actually are concrete, which is very strong. Soon we have two curved stacks of blocks resting on a steel supporting frame. Right, uh, they don't meet. One more piece of the jigsaw to go in, the keystone, the most important part of the arch. Next, we need to put in the post-tensioning cables, the sort of puppet strings that will hold the arch up. Go. Okay, so I'll thread this in. The hole is in that plate there. Indeed. Well, there, there it is. Are. I can see the other end. Now it's at the bottom. Brilliant. Once the cables have been threaded, we need to tighten or post-tension them because it's still the steel frame that's holding the arch up. Wow, so that really is... It's just resting. When Ed's happy that the cables have been evenly tensioned, we're ready to remove the steel frame. Looking good. Right, so this is now getting rid of the form. This yeah. is kind of a moment of truth for you then. It As is a lead engineer, you're lead engineer on our project. <laughs> if it now all falls down, I'm the client, I'm going to be disappointed. You were also the builder though, so it could just right, be that. So is that yeah. <laughs> right, this is it. It's standing on its own or it's landing on their heads. Why are we backing off? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm just following you. <laughs> well, you're the engineer, you should know. It works! She stands. I think we've made something beautiful. <laughs> Ed wants to tension our puppet strings even more to increase